Welcome to Springville Seventh day Adventist Church online here in Melbourne, Australia. I am Pastor Victor Acuna and I am so happy to be here with you praising the name of our Lord Jesus Christ on another beautiful Sabbath day. We are blessed to have another wonderful speaker today. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, and happy Sabbath to all of us. We are glad to be able to come to Jesus' house of worship, isn't it? I thought it's going to be a long time again before we can come to worship the Lord in this house of worship, but we thank the Lord for his mercy. The title of our, um, the topic that we are going to study this morning is entitled, God's commandment and his love for man. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he formed man out of the dust of the ground. And he created him in his own image. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. God could have made Adam like one of the animals. Could God do that? Like a lion, perhaps? Or a standing monkey, according to what Darwin says. But no, times, thousand times, no. God made man in his own image. In the image of God, he made us, male and female, he created us. So God created Adam in his own image and gave him the power to have dominion over all the earth, over all the animals, over all the fish of the sea, and over the fowls of the air. What a loving God our God is. Adam, the crowning glory of God's creation. But sad to say, sin enters into the world and it destroys God's plan for humanity. We are not supposed to die, you see. The Lord God made us to live on this planet Earth forever. We are made just a little lower than the angels of God. Remember that. But sad, sad thing. We sinned. We inherited Adam and Eve's sin. And so all of us now are going to die until the Lord will have to make this old earth new again. Right from the beginning, God gives man the power to choose. Which side we should have to go with? Which side we have to follow? But with that freedom comes responsibility. Joshua in Israel's time says, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But what Jesus says to us in our time, in the time when he was here on earth, to the disciples who follow him, John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. If we don't love the Lord, we don't have to follow his commandment. But you know, if we don't, we are in big trouble. Because that commandment that the Lord gave to Moses and he has given to us is the one that will judge us. The love of God is greater. It's so high and it's so big. 
the love of God for man is great and strong and is powerful and immeasurable. No one can compare it. The song that says, the love of God, the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star, reaches to the lowest hill. The guilty pay bow down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. Could we with ink the ocean fill and every scroll a parchment made where every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade. To, to write the love of God could drain the ocean dry. That means we cannot even start to think and to, to talk about God's love. It's so big and it's so strong. It is, um, could we with ink the ocean fill and every man ascribed by trade could write the love of God, could drain the ocean dry. It is important. And it streets, the love of God, it streets from sky to sky. No one could ever write the love of God. How much he had loved us to come down and die for us. Is, yes, the love of God for man, for humanity is so great, is so big, so wide, so strong, immeasurable, that instead of obliterating all the sinners on this planet Earth, he said, I'll come down instead to die for man. What a loving God we serve, you see? We praise God for that love that he had given us. Hallelujah to our God, the Father. Amen. What I'm trying to say is, if sinners is left to die in his sin, in our sin, we are going to die an eternal death. Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death. There's no another way. No hope of resurrection. If God did not come down to rescue us from doom and to save us, we are going to die forever. In the Garden of Eden, when God told Adam and Eve, in the day that you will eat of the fruit, the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. We could have been like the rest of God's creation, the animals, dogs, cats. When we die, that's it, gone forever, no coming back. But because of God's love, he finds a way that when we die, we have a hope of redemption. Praise God for that. He came down. Instead of us to pay for the penalty of death, he came down and died for us, crucified on the cross, and he saves all of us. We thank God that our God is a loving God, a merciful God, a long-suffering God. When I was younger, elementary grades, could be I am grade five, after hearing a sermon, I thought, why would Jesus have to die on the cross for sinners? If I am God, I'm going to flick this planet Earth Finished. 
gone forever. And I will make a new planet Earth where all the people will be obedient to the Lord's commandment. All will be good. But now, the Lord doesn't do that. He wants us to follow him because we love him. And because it's not because he's going to force us. It's because we love him and we want to follow him. Not by force, not because we have to. So you see, until now, the world is still not 100% following the Lord. Some says there's no more commandment. Some says there's no God. Some says that we come from eight. You see, the Lord who made this planet Earth and made humanity has been forgotten by some other people. John 3.16. If you memorize the verse, can you say it with me? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Did you see how loving the God that we serve? Did you say that instead of destroying all of us and make a new planet. He just come down and die for us. What a loving God he is. The Ten Commandments that the Lord has given to Moses in Mount Sinai is the same commandment that would judge us. Amidst the lightning and thunder, the whole mountain smoke and quake, for the God of heaven and earth has come down upon earth. The powerful God, the almighty God, who made us in the beginning, who made this earth in the beginning, has come down. He loves us. That kind of love that we cannot fathom. And we just serve him. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sometimes we remember, sometimes we forget. It is important to remember, memorize God's law, keep it in our heart that we sin not. 1844, do you remember the date? 1844, what happened? End of the long time prophecy in the Bible, the end of 2,300 days and 1844, William Miller says that Jesus is coming back to this earth, but no. Where did just Jesus go? He went to the most holy temple in heaven. To what? To minister on our behalf. And that started the investigative judgment. He's looking at all the records of the books in heaven. We have three books, remember? And those books are the book of remembrance, the book of iniquity, the book of life. When a person dies and he is following the Lord, his name is deleted from the book of remembrance, entered into the book of life. But when a person doesn't know God and reject him and refuse to follow God, his name is deleted or her name will be deleted in the book of records in heaven in the book of life and entered into the book of iniquity. And you know what will happen? That person is ready for the second day. Blessed and holy are they that have the right for the first resurrection. The first resurrection in which when Jesus will return to this earth and he will say, awake ye that sleep in the dust and arise. That's the first resurrection. We want to be there. But there is 
there is a responsibility for each one of us. Do you know when provision is closed? That started in 1844. Do you know who knows somebody? When the decree will be passed and America is going to legislate death to all who follow God's commandment on the seventh day Sabbath. You see, death decree. That's the end of probation. But we can individually close our probation. When? When a person dies, all the books of records in heaven is closed. When a person rejects and refuses to follow God, when he died, his, the books of records where his name is written is closed. But when death decree will come, probation is closed, when America is going to announce death to those all who follow God's commandment. America is a lamb-like beast in the prophecy. You know that? America is a God-loving nation. But sad to say, one day, America is going to speak like a dragon. That's when he pronounced death decree to all who follow God's commandment. So children, teenagers, as adults, we have to memorize God's commandment. Keep it in our heart always when the Bible will be taken away. We have the law of God safe in our heart and nobody can take it away from us, ready for the Lord's return. I'm not saying that the commandment is going to save us. Because we love the Lord, follow the Lord. God will save us and our names when we die following the Lord. Our names will be going where in the book? In the book of life in heaven. If you read the last chapter of verse, um, chapter 20 in Revelation, and it says, those names only that are written in the book of life go home with the Lord when he returns. Remember, judgment has been going on since 1844. The Lord could have ended it quickly. Why are we waiting until now? Why do you think we are, he's not, he has not returned until now? Because he is a loving God. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but will come in repentance that he, we may go home with him into his kingdom. He doesn't want anyone to die without hope. And so the Lord says, I'll wait. Maybe tomorrow, next day, next week. That's why the Lord has not returned yet. Remember the parable of the ten virgins? Can you remember that? That the ten virgins, they are wearing what? White robes already, waiting. Sad to say. Five of them are foolish. Five are good. They are waiting already. We have to. Um, and Paul says, make your election and your salvation Say, we have to ask the Lord to enter our names in the book of life, and we have to keep what the Lord wants us to do. This morning, God's will is for all of us to keep his commandment. You know that? This morning, we are going to look again 
at the Ten Commandments of God given to Moses and us, written by the finger of God. If you have your Bibles with you, can you please turn over to Exodus? Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 17. Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 17. Ready? And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Commandment number one, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Question, is it possible to have another gods in our lives that we keep that we don't know? I saw Helena nod, maybe I do too. Well, it says that to have another gods in our lives is um, remember that to have an idol in our heart and in our lives is to love other things more than God. Anything that will separate us away from God is an idol. We have to remember that. Anything that we love more than God and separate us from the love of God is an idol. Can I give you an example? Wealth. Who doesn't want wealth? Huh? Everybody is trampled from one head to another so that they will be number one. And they are number one. When they are already at the top, they are the best. What about money? Do you think sometimes that money will take us away from God? What about fame? Yes. yes. What about success in life? Yes. What about pride? Remember, Satan in the atmosphere of heaven, in the environment of heaven, which is perfect, feel because of what? Pride. In his pride. Remember that pride goeth before destruction. Commandment number two. Thou shalt not make any grieving image. Thou shalt not make any grieving image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of fathers. Remember this, visiting the iniquities of fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. How does the Lord think of a person when we bow to another God or we have another God in our heart? How does the Lord look at it? That we hate him. That we don't want to follow him. I am a jealous God. That's what he says. He is a jealous God. So how do we love the Lord? Mark chapter 12, verse 30, it says, And ye shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. That is 100% loyalty to God. Can we do that? With God's help, yes, we can. If we make mistake, we can go back to God and ask for forgiveness and ask the Lord wisdom to follow him according to his will. Commandment number three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, 
For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. When I was walking, that was about 20 years ago, I have a friend. I like her. She's a nice lady. The only thing is she talks too much, but that's not a problem. If a person talks too much, because she loves to talk. The only problem for me, only for me is, every two or three sentences that she spoke, she put the name of God at the end. How does she do that? She will say, Jesus Christ. And my, and the hair in my back doesn't like it, it stands. I'm afraid, you see. Because I know that we shall not take the name of the Lord our God in vain for nothing. We make his name very ordinary. So one day I cannot take it anymore. I was looking around in my workplace and I thought, there's no one here who can protect God's name. I'm the only one who knows that what she's doing is taking the Lord in vain. So I asked the Lord to help me and I come to her one, one day and I told her, Deborah, do you know that every time you say the name of the Lord, when you have to talk, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad, funny or sad, she always put the name of the Lord in there. And do, can you imagine how many names of Jesus is being spoken of? And she's not praying. She's just um, taking a story ordinarily, the Lord's name. And I said, I told her, do you know that we pray on that name? We worship God on that name. And she says, no, I don't sin. And I said, but the Bible says you do. And, and I said, do you have a Bible with you at home? And she said, no. She's, um, she goes to a church and there's a priest there. And she says, borrow the priest Bible and bring it in here. I say that so that she will believe when she read it because it comes from the priest. She did not bring a Bible from the, from the priest. So I end up bringing my own Bible and we read Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And she was looking at me and I said, did you see that? If we take the name of the Lord constantly, we make his name ordinary. And we are not praying. You are not praying. She looks at me and I, and she nod her head and I thought, she understood. And since that time, I never heard her to speak in the Lord, name of the Lord in vain. And I was happy and I thanked the Lord. Commandment number four, remember, the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. The seventh day Sabbath is holy. It is a sign. It is a mark that we are God's children and he is our God. Destroy that mark or sign. Trample the commandments of God and he cannot recognize us anymore as his children. The mark or the sign is gone. 
So you see how important the commandment of God is. Or the seventh day of the week, it's holy. Only for the Lord, reserved for the Lord. And the, and the Israelites before, they have to prepare. Do you remember the story in Deuteronomy? One man was picking up sticks, and that was Sabbath day. And what was the verdict of Moses? He went to the Lord and he says, what we gonna do with this man? And the Lord says, stone him to death. So they stoned the man to death. That's how important the commandments of the Lord is. You see, sometimes we just think about it, but it will judge us or it will save us at the end. You see, it is important that we keep God's commandment. The Sabbath also is the seal of God in our forehead. And the angel, the angel who is sealing the people of God ready for his kingdom at the last days is sealing now. When it's over, he's going to report to Jesus in the most holy place that his job is done. And then the Lord will say, it is finished. That's what happened. But the Lord is waiting for us. We have to ask the Lord to help us. Sometimes we cannot help ourselves, but the Lord can if we ask him. Ezekiel 20, 20. Moreover also, I give them my Sabbath, that it will be a sign between you and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. Verse 20, Ezekiel 20, 20. And hallow my Sabbath, and it shall be a sign between me and you that I am that I am your God. And hallow my Sabbath, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord thy God. Commandment number five. Children, listen to this. Commandment number five. I would like to emphasize to the children this morning that this commandment is a commandment with a promise. Remember that. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. What is the Lord's promise? A long life on this earth. What is honor? To honor your parents means to love and respect your parents, children. You can do that, can you? Yes, we can. Each one of us has their own parents. We can love and honor our parents as long as they are still alive. And the Lord is going to make a mark on that and will give us a long life on this. That's the promise of the Lord. And the Lord will never tell lies. Commandment number six, thou shalt not kill. Mark chapter 12, verse 31, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is no greater commandment than this. Commandment number seven, verse 14, thou shalt not commit adultery. But listen to what Matthew chapter 5, verse 28 says. But I say unto you, whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart. Already committed adultery in his heart. Be careful. The Lord can read our hearts. You see? So there's nothing hidden before the Lord. Commandment number eight, thou shalt not steal. 
we must not steal. The Lord our God is a loving God. If we ask him, he will give us. You see, even if we be hungry, we don't have to steal. In Israel before, if a person is hungry and pass through a farm with plenty fruits, it is allowed in their time. In their time, I'm not talking about our time now. In their time, that they can pick and eat the fruit until they are full, but do not harvest it. That means do not put it in a bag and bring it to home. That is the commandment of the Israelites. You can eat. But this time, the Lord says, thou shalt not steal, then we must not steal. We can ask the Lord to help us. Don't do it. Commandment number nine. Verse 16, thou shalt not be false witness against thy neighbor. Can we tell white lies? Do you think? Well, the Lord knows the heart. The Lord knows the situation. It is between us and God. Verse 17, commandment number 10. Thou shalt not commit thy Thou shalt not commit thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not commit thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. May I ask you? What is the difference between appreciation, praising, or coveting? What's the difference? To appreciate means is to say, you praise your neighbor. Oh, she had beautiful garden. What beautiful flowers she had. Oh, she had a beautiful house. That is appreciation. And that's not wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you say, what beautiful flowers white until there's no one there to see me, and I take it, what is that in your heart? Is that appreciation or mixed with coveting already? Covetousness, it is. It is, we sin by stealing, we sin by coveting, and that's it. Okay, may I tell you, James chapter 2, verse 10. James chapter 2, verse 10. If we keep the whole law, offend in one point, what happened to us? We are guilty of all. See, we have to remember the Lord's commandment is holy and the Lord is watching us. Because we are his children, and we want us to be different from the world. First John chapter 2, verse 15. What does John say? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Yes. With God's help, we can do and obey God's commandment. Not because it will save us a thousand times. No. The commandment is not the one who's going to save us. Who's going to save us? It is God who's going to save us. But because we want to do his will, God's will, and this is God's will for us to do, to keep his commandment. John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. But if we don't love the Lord, don't keep his commandment. The trouble, big trouble will be when the Lord will return and separate the good from the bad.
The law of God is like a mirror. And when we look at the mirror, it says, your face is dirty. Do we have to go to the mirror and for cleansing? No, we don't. The same with the commandment of God. When we look at the commandment of God and it says, you have sinned, where would we go? We go to Jesus for cleansing, right? We have to ask the Lord's forgiveness. The same with mirror. We don't ask the mirror to cleanse us. We go to the bathroom and wash our face and we are clean. When Jesus says um, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness because he is ready to forgive us. We still have time. The provision is not yet closed, but when the provision is closed, that's it. 1844 is the time of the end. But when Jesus will return, may I ask you, what is the difference between the time of the end and the end of time? The time of the end, according to my mother before, is when she gets pregnant and they start to prepare, you know, for giving birth. And when the time is come, that is the time of the end. When the time is come, the chicken is going inside the coop. That is the time of the end. But when my father takes it out and kill it so that my mother could eat the chicken, what's that time? End of time for that chicken, right? We are now in the time of the end, but when the provision will be closed, that is the end of time. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace we are saved through faith, and that not your own. It is the gift of God. The Lord loves us. The Lord loves us so much. And he loves everyone, all of us, his children, to go home with him into his kingdom. And they live forever in that mansion that he has prepared for each one of us. One day, if faithful, we shall be there. Can you imagine? We shall not die anymore. Forever we will live. And that beautiful mansions that he has prepared, the streets of gold, eternal life, happiness forever. There is no more Satan to tempt us to sin. We have to be there. My brothers and sisters, we have to be there. May I ask you again, if we miss the coming of the Lord and can't go home with him into his kingdom when he returns, where is our next destination? We know. We know where is our destination, the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. He is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Listen to what Sister White says. When Jesus will return, there will be a big panorama in the sky. It's like a big cinema. He's going to show what happened from the beginning until the end, in time of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, until he was crucified in the cross and his resurrection, and then he went up into heaven and he says, I will come again. Remember that? And the two angels says, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye up here gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus is coming back. 
as you have seen him return into heaven. Yes, there will be a big panorama in the sky. The Ten Commandments of God, the Holy Law, God's commandment, His righteousness, that amidst Amidst the thunder and lightning, the mountain quake and smoke was proclaimed in Mount Sinai as a guide of life, is now revealed to man as the rule of judgment. The hand of God opens the table of stone, and there sin the precepts of God's commandment, traced as with a pin of fire. The words are so plain that all can read them. Memory is aroused. The darkness of superstition and heresy is swept away from every mind. And God's Ten Commandments, brief, comprehensive, and authoritative, are presented to the view of all the inhabitants of the earth. It is impossible to describe the horror and despair those who have trampled upon God's holy commandment, his requirements. The law was given that they might have compared their character with it and learned their depicts. While there is yet opportunity for repentance and reform. But in order to secure the favor of this world, to achieve the dreams of life, wealth, success, fame, pride. They trample the commandments of God, even the Holy Sabbath day, which is the sign between us and God that we may be his people and he will be our God. May I ask you again, have we keep the commandments of God that it would become a sign or a mark between us and God. Only if we remember it or has to be kept 100%. The choice this morning is ours. I will leave it to you to answer them. The Lord is listening. Remember, God loves us, and he wants all of us to be with him in his kingdom. He died for us, you see. That kind of love that is greater, strong, powerful. And the Lord says, I'll die for you. You are my children. I want no one to perish, but to go home with me in my kingdom. If you would like contact details or information on how to support the ministry of the Springville Seventh-day Adventist Church, you can find those in the description down below. May God bless you and may God keep you safe. Amen.